I guess. Well, I don't know. Or two. It doesn't really yeah. matter. I would have also divorced George, frankly. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Joseph was, by all reports, a loving, committed father to all of Michaela's children. The family lived in Half Moon Bay in California, which is on the coast of California, just south of San Francisco. Yeah, I've been there. Have nice you? little town. Yeah, yeah. that's what I've heard. Yeah, if you go like start in San Mateo on the bay and just go basically due west across the peninsula, you wind up at Half Moon Bay. Yeah, that's yeah. What I've heard it's really nice. Yeah. Okay, so. Backstory done? Yeah. Yeah, backstory done. On January 16th, Anna had been attending pre K that morning. I don't know if everywhere this is true, but in America, I believe, most places, you do half-day pre-K. Pre-kindergarten. Pre-kindergarten. For those who don't know what pre-K Sorry. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pre-K was a little pre-me. I, uh, we didn't have pre-K when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It, we, people had daycare for a while, and it is a scholastic program, usually. It's, mm. It was at a at the school that her brothers, her older brothers were attending. Yeah, the funny, the funny thing is that it's... During the 70s and the 80s, I believe, school districts ran pre-K programs. Yeah. And then, of course, as funding began to dry up, that was shifted to other programs, sort of like Head Start was one. And now I don't know anybody that has a kid in pre-K. I'm sure that they're putting their kid in some kind of pre-kindergarten program. Yeah. But I don't actually know how those are operating anymore just mm. because the funding in this country is by state even is yeah. just city even it's just so i was miss. i mean i was in pre-k when i it was around still run through portland public when i was in school here so that was a couple of moons ago Devin. Shh, no yeah. that was just yesterday <laughs> a long anyway time ago. anyway anyway yeah. so anna rode the bus home i've seen it reported as at noon but i've also seen it reported that she got home at one and i cannot imagine that it was an hour-long bus ride from her pre-kindergarten class to her home so I'm not really sure. It was midday. I mean, they kind of lived in the sticks up that little road. That, yeah, but it wouldn't you know. have taken an hour. You can't put a four-year-old on a bus for an hour. Have you ever been stuck yeah, behind can. a school bus? I, I could see know. it taking an hour easily. I, yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry. I grew up in the boonies. You can. Yeah. All right. Fine enough. <laughs> I've seen reporting that some family friends dropped by for a visit earlier Didn't that morning. Did any of these morning. people have a job, for Christ's sake? I, I don't know. It was the 70s, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Likely adult family friends. Yeah. So while the friends chatted with her mother and stepfather, Anna went to her room, changed her clothes, and if you really care to see what she was wearing, you can go find a description of it. And she went outside to play. It was a rainy day, but not so unpleasant that a child couldn't enjoy themselves. Around 1.30, Anna returned inside to hang up her coat, which I guess was too warm, or maybe it had stopped raining, or I don't really know why. If you've ever worn a raincoat when it's even slightly warm outside yeah, and you're trying to run really around gross. I could see why she wouldn't oh for sure yeah you especially those old yeah. rubbery ones oh yeah, yeah. you, you get yeah. as wet wearing the things as you do without them yeah, really. yeah yeah then she well she went right back outside after she returned her coat inside and then at about two her mom said that she had heard Anna singing to the cats outside at about it's a little early for that campaign <laughs> at 2.15 okay. she said she didn't here on uh, out there anymore but they did have a family dog that was prone to barking at any kind of intrusion of anybody who it didn't know did, it didn't know and it was a it was a younger dog it was more of a puppy dog oh excitedly barking instead of warning barking i think either but definitely reacting to any presence other okay. than the ones that it was used to and the reason that i mentioned that is because it wasn't a family dog that had been left over from her marriage to George. It so was a it, new it, family dog. It did dog. not know George. Right. Theoretically. The, I mean, yeah, yeah, theoretically. So since she didn't hear the dog barking, she just didn't really think anything of Anna, her not being able to hear Anna singing anymore. So at 2.20, Michaela went to call Anna to come inside, but didn't see her in the backyard anymore. So at that point, Joseph and Michaela started to search for Anna, but at about 2.45, they still hadn't found any sign of her and they they just called the cops which at is that point terrible because i mean a lot of parents know this is that you your kid disappears you know from your view and from earshot and you start freaking out and yelling just to find the kid looking at you like what i followed a bug it's okay like yeah. that's what yeah. people just expect to be the case so yeah. i yeah. can imagine how they'd be like oh god she followed a cat again or something mm-hmm 
Yeah, and 25 minutes later, you're like, oh, no, maybe uh -oh. she didn't. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, a little looking, but, you know, I, and it, by the way, this is a kind of a rural area. It's, it's nice also. It's, an, it's a know. nice, quiet area. Yeah. That not a lot of people who are unfamiliar, who didn't just live in the area, drove through or mm -hmm. were in at all. And also, by the way, no scary critters live in there. I mean, there's no, like, bears or mountain lions. Not really. Chupacabras. Yeah. 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 No, no, not really. Yeah. As far as we know. Yeah. One of the first things that the police did was to ring the tsunami siren, which, is, you know, in other places is called a tornado siren or a bomb uh, drill or whatever. Siren. You know, a, a siren that's meant to notify people. I So I read this as well. And I'd also read that the cop who showed up rang the, the, the siren on his car. Uh -huh. Okay, now that makes more sense to me because I would think that ring the local soon or that's kind of a big step that's a yeah. people are gonna all evacuate step to yeah. freak the entire community out like it just that seems ab above and beyond have you lived in a place where those sirens are used frequently I, I've, I've been, been to I've places but I haven't one. lived there no. okay so right. there are a lot of there's a very big difference between sounding the tsunami warning like one time you know as a local having lived in a place where they do that what a uh, actual warning siren sounds like because they just turn it on and it goes forever. It doesn't turn versus, back off. Versus just, you know, having it go... And, and then, then it, letting it go back yeah. down. And then people would just be like, what? I mean, whatever. It was a test. Um, yeah. I agree. It It is po totally possible that actually what you know, it actually happened was... It just seemed an extreme step. That's all I'm oh. getting at. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a smaller community, so a five-year-old wandering away. It was the 70s. They just kind of, I think they really did think she had just wandered away, and if they could just raise a siren, she would come back. Like and I'm, I'm trying to think about the irony, though, that, that they actually, you know, blasted the tsunami alert and everything, and, like, to, to look for this little, to save this little five-year-old girl. In the meantime, like two or three other five-year-old kids get like trampled, <laughs> you know, by, yeah. the, by all the people evacuating. This yeah. is why you don't just randomly blare those horns. Well, yeah. exactly. We're yeah. off topic already. Oh, yeah. totally. That's okay. Anyway, uh, if you haven't already guessed, whatever siren was sounded did not bring Anna running. So they, we haven't mentioned this yet, but there was a, a what's referred to as a creek that was running along the back edge of their property. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was, it, it sounds like it was a really strong creek. At that time. Uh, yeah. But they all, they decided that that seemed like a thing that was really dangerous and they decided to converge their search on the creek. Well, if now. this is January, you know, that's the middle of winter. I grew up next to a teeny tiny little creek that in January was a, a raging bigger. torrent. Yeah. So I can, un I mean, it, and what I yeah. know in a summertime creek was something that I could take three big steps and cross. In the wintertime, I would never even dare to go near it. So I can see why they would say, if it's that kind of scenario, I can see why they would immediately be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a problem. Yep. Yeah, yep. it was in a flooding stage uh -huh. uh, at that time. And Michaela has said time and time again that she always felt like that creek was a danger to her family but you know it was a nice house actually <laughs> houses uh, are expensive i a lot of people want to have a, would love to have a creek running through their property i, I mean, think it was kind of a love-hate relationship with that creek for her where she thought i really like having it running through my property but also i have a five-year-old and when it floods she could easily fall in and drown and that seems to be exactly what they thought had actually happened to Which Anna. Which an unreasonable yeah, conclusion. Totally yeah. understandable. Yeah. I agree. They actually thought it was so strong that her bot, she could have drowned and washed away. Not just drowned. It was only like two or three miles to the ocean. And yeah. washed downstream. From their property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Although, um... It kind of snakes around a little bit, goes under highway one through a culvert, not a bridge, so she would have probably gotten hung up somewhere. Right, and yeah, that was the hope. They actually did send divers down. Yeah, and also, by the way, it dumps out uh, onto a beach. It doesn't just, you know, pull out of a cliff into the ocean, right? right? So, yeah. Her body yeah. would likely have been found had this happened, but... I think so. Again, that's yeah. a little more theories. Like I said, divers were sent down, so it was... That's how deep it was that you have divers go down into this creek, apparently. I'm guessing they were hanging onto ropes. Yeah, I, I would guess. <laughs> but they didn't find anything, which was kind of a bummer. 
they and actually I've seen it said that this was one of the most extensive searches that's ever happened in California coast or something like that. Some neighbors came forward a couple days later and said that they had actually seen a white panel truck with two men, one much younger than the other, drive along a normally very qu- otherwise very quiet road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That nobody ever really drove on except for locals. Yeah, if you look at it on the on the aerial, it's it's, it's not it's not a throughway from one place to another. It goes up and it sort of dead ends into another snaky little road that snakes off in a different direction. Yeah. It's not a shortcut between no. any two places it's, at all. It's not. And it's yeah. also not it's not the kind of place you just kind of get lost going. I also I, I have a problem with this, you know, it was a couple days later, they didn't really know exactly what time they saw this truck, uh, you know, if it was indeed that afternoon, if it was much later that afternoon, if it was earlier that morning, if it was even early on that day. Maybe not even the same you know? day. Were they, were they sure it was the same day? I know? don't I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And then the other part of that was I they, they always say there's a, two men, one was much older than the other, but no, I've never, ever seen somebody say, like, one of them was 20 and the other was 60. It's always just been like, I don't know, one, one was, was way older than the, the other. And we know how friggin' subjective that is. Me today, sitting in a truck next to me about two months ago with a full-on beard. Yeah. There would it, There's a massive age difference yeah. in appearance. Yeah, that's so, a good point. I mean, you could literally have one guy with a beard and one guy without, and they're the same age, and you'd have no idea. Idea, especially in a moving vehicle. Yeah, I that these kind of details. It's uh, you know, people are grasping at straws, yeah. but th- yeah. it looks to me like this is a classic plumber apprentice situation. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna just. It was Mario right and yeah. Luigi. Yeah. They're the same age. Well, I guess yeah. they're not. They're brothers. They're close to the same age. Yeah, yeah. but that same. that mustache makes Mario look so much older than Luigi. It's true. Mm. And it turns out they also had different different fathers, so yeah. that helps. It's oh, true. Yeah. Uh, there's more to this story, but I kind of want to dig into that as we dig into theories. Is that okay with you guys? Sure. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. So I guess we'll talk about theories. But first, uh, let's take a quick break. If an ogre with a club shows up at your house, you're in big trouble. Because for one, I didn't know ogres were real, and if they are, then that means we live in a fantasy land, and there's magic, and there's all these other crazy things, and oh my god, it's really scary to think about. Don't think about that stuff at all. But in the real world, there are actual scary things, and they don't have to be so scary. Security. Simply Safe is just always ready for anything that gets thrown at it. If a storm takes out your power, Simply Safe is ready. If an intruder cuts your phone line, they're ready. Say that intruder destroys your keypad or your siren, Simply Safe will still get you the help you need and here's what I love about it. Maybe it's overkill. Maybe you don't really need to be ready for every worst case scenario. Personally, I kind of am because I expect the apocalypse, but I'm weird that way. But the great thing is, Simply Safe is just always ready just in case and that's what makes it so great. And while it should cost an arm and a leg, it doesn't and that's because they're good people. They charge what's fair. That's right. $14.99 $14.99 a month. That's all. No contracts, no hidden fees. I recommend Simply Safe to everyone I know. And you've got to check it out. So go to simplysafe.com slash sideways. That's simplysafe.com slash sideways. And really, if there's an ogre with a club, just just run away. We're back. Uh, so theory number one uh-huh. is the, the creek. creek. Yeah, the creek. I, highly so, unlikely, but I'm gonna. I'll have it on here anyway, I guess. Yeah. Um, like I said, the divers found nothing. There has been official journalistic reporting that says that yes, this is what happened to her. Mm. Realistically, there is no evidence for or against this. Yeah. Well, I guess it, I mean, in theory, I mean, if there had been enough flow and if she and she had some, it would have been a fluke. But it's conceivable, she gets all the way down to the to the ocean without hanging up on something. Which would be fluky, but I guess it's conceivable. I don't think it's as fluky as you do because she's a five-year-old girl. She's a little... It's not me with my my arms and legs flailing around as I'm tumbling through water. I am more likely to snag on something than someone that is a quarter of my size because there's much smaller dangly bits. So I could see her 
bouncing off stuff. It also depends on what she's wearing. Yeah. So right. if she was, you know, if she was in that rain jacket that we talked about that maybe she was wearing that was super hot. Those things are kind of have big seams and straps and stuff, so that would hang up. Whereas if she was just in, say, a t-shirt, mm. well, that leaves less stuff to snag on things. I, this is, I mean, barring all of the kookiness down the line that we're going to talk about, like, I kind of think that this might be what happened because well, the if it's flood stages, two miles is not a very long time. The trick with this one, for me, is that there is just as much evidence that this happened as any of our other theories. Yeah, that's true. That. So, but the, could here, be. Here's the thing about 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 water in, in, in flood stages. It's just picking up lots of crap and flushing it all downstream, and it winds up building up in all kinds of places in what we call strainers. These are these are just uh-huh. big, huge, like piles of brush and branches or God knows what that the water flows through and, and then you get pushed up against it, but the pressure won't let you move and you drown or die of exposure. And so, I mean, it's just unlikely that she would have avoided all, it's only all two, that debris. But it's only two miles. I mean, yeah. what you're talking about is things that happen over the course of miles and miles, those yeah. pockets and those whirls and those eddies. Two miles We're, is a long ways in a creek. It, it is, but if it's, but again, I think that it, at flood stage, there's less of that, those pockets for her to get caught in. But it doesn't matter. I, th- this is the one that I think has got to be the most likely based on everything else that we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just from what I've seen happen to things in water before. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. hard to tell. Like hard drives that are neutrally buoyant. Uh, well, uh, she was wearing rain boots, uh-huh. and I guess one would assume down. that. I guess I would just assume that those would get sucked off. Wo- yeah, that it's, something would have surfaced. It's something. just, it's really a shame that they didn't actually just at right after they started searching the creek that they didn't send somebody down to the beach just you know wait there yeah. immediately see what, see what comes see what comes popping out. You yeah, know? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a shame, yeah. but that's where we're at. Yeah. The next theory is the theory I'm calling the mysterious couple. I've known a lot of those. It's like, how do these two get together? Because it's just so weird. Mm. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you and your wife? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That one's not so strange. It's weird. Yeah. It yeah. kind of is. <laughs> it's weird. We're kind of opposite. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the mysterious couple comes from Anna's oldest brother. Okay. Nanda? Yeah, Nanda, I was just going to say, I've seen it reported that he is, was, is nine years older than her, but I've seen it reported that it was either of the brothers that remembered this, but 30 years after her disappearance, one of her older brothers recalled that a month or so prior to Anna's disappearance, the it three took him 30 kids, years to remember this? He had repressed it, apparently. Oh, okay. the, the kids had been walking together. And a car pulled up, driven by a man, and a woman was in the passenger seat. He described the car as a 1960s model Chevrolet Impala. Because we're not supposed to say Chevy anymore. It's Chevy. Can't say Chevy? Get anymore. over it. It's Chevy it. America. When, uh, did, when did that rule come out? A couple years ago. Oh, really? Chevy okay. was like, we don't want to be Chevy. We want to be Chevrolet. That's because oh. they were trying to distance themselves. From Chevy Chase. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, Chevy Chase, know. the town, or the, the, the actor? The actor. Oh, Because okay. have you seen Fletch? Uh, yeah, actually, it was not very good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. This is why they wanted to distance themselves. It took them years to figure it out. It took them a long time to figure, figure it out. out. Okay, but, so, yeah. anyway, it was a Chevrolet Impala with Washington license plates, not California. Or Which, Oregon. by the way, that's like a thousand miles north. Some odd, yeah. This is a lot of detail to remember 30 years later. It sure is. Yeah. The woman had long, dark hair and wore a loose-fitting white shirt with embroidery on it. Uh Anna's brother could not describe the man. Apparently, she tried to coax Anna... The woman tried to coax Anna into the car, and Anna refused, and so they just drove away. And I've seen in different recollections different details about him saying how he felt about the whole thing. I Does it feel convenient that it's a 30 year later revelation to, to anybody um yeah a little bit it it just it, it's it smacks strange for me well and and i understand that people do remember things suddenly i've done it but uh, it's know. uh well first of all it's like you know memory is unreliable you don't know that he actually had this memory he dreamed it uh, after all this time or 
watched a Maybe TV dread- documentary about the da- stranger danger. And- yeah, or he dredged up a, an old memory and his, his, his mind, his memory kind of embroidered it. But it certainly, um, I don't even know why he bothered to mention it because it certainly is useless at this point in time. Correct. He had, yeah, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, I would, yeah. But I guess that is a, it's a theory that they could be involved somehow in her disappearance. Like they were the ones they that could were have responsible? Been prowling to abduct her or any other, you know, cute little girl. They're, just, and they're on a scouting mission. They spotted an 